welcome to Trake, a new city of ours to visit in Lithuania. We took a 30 minute train to get here. I think it cost us like five euros to get here yeah. um, for both of us. And that was second class. We bought a second class ticket. We got a first class on the way home, see what that's like. So we show you guys that. But uh, we just arrived and the minute I stepped in, look what happened. <laughs> My shoes broke, unbelievable. But you know, there are positives, obviously. There's this beautiful lake here and uh, one of the first things I'm going to do, as you can probably imagine, is I'm going to go and try and find uh, some glue for my shoes or some new shoes, whichever one I find quicker. Um, so that's going to be the first thing I do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make our way to Torakei Castle uh, because we've got a beautiful castle here full of history. But most importantly, we're here to look at the history of the Karadim. Karadim? How do you say it, Tam? Kara... 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 Karai? Karadim. Karadim. I can't do the roll. You can do the roll better than me. Kara, yes, Karadim. Kara, 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 I think it is. <laughs> Fair play! <laughs> Karadim. Kara, the Karadim people. Um, and the Karadites. Karadites. Hard to say. I really do apologise, guys. Kara, uh, Kara, right. Right. <laughs> I can't quite do the uh, R's as well as Tammy can. <laughs> She's been practicing. Um, but we're here to explore the culture of these people, uh, to learn more about who they are and what they represent in Torake. Because in Torake, a lot of people come here to visit purely for, from a touristic perspective. But we'd like to know more about the people that live here and more about that community in general. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and fix my shoe somehow or we'll buy me a new pair of shoes get a drink because i'm thirsty and then we're gonna make our way to the castle we could have got a boat um Just oh lord <laughs> every step i take um it, the, the shoe folds into itself um but yeah but we got off to take a boat um but i was like oh no thank you bro <laughs> i uh I need to go and fix my shoes. I've <laughs> got a supermarket to sell, I think. I've got a supermarket here. Oh, I can roll back, can't I? It's the same shop that we went into last night. Vrimi supermarket. I've heard that that used to be quite affordable. And then recently it's become quite expensive. Um, I don't know how true that is. I think it's that way. This way? I think. Okay, I doubt they're going to have shoes, but they might have super glue. Let's cross our fingers. For the very least, I'm thirsty. So let's see if they've got something we can drink, which can at least keep us fueled. So the walk to the castle from the train station is about 45 minutes, roughly. Um, that's what Google Maps is telling us. And I don't know if that if there's a quicker way. I could probably just could have got a bolt or something, but I don't mind walking. We've been eating a lot of Lithuanian goodies. You may have seen our Lithuanian food tour if you haven't. Watch that after the video, you'll see. <laughs> the walk will do is good, that's to say the least. So, uh, yeah, we're quite keen to burn off the calories. So what we try and do when we visit a new place is we try and try the local food, but uh, also we will uh, try and do a hell of a lot of walking to burn them off. But I just realized she's copying me today in both the top and the bandana. So I don't want to be one of those cheesy couples that walks around with uh, the same t-shirt so I'm despite the fact I'm boiling hot <laughs> she planned there she got my top out guys all right here we go so how do we get in is it through here yeah. I guess it is okay super glue how do we find super glue <laughs> that'd be a good start yeah 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 I don't know what they sell here they might not even sell it but uh Got some cool glasses <laughs> for the very least can can travel around in style with a, a flip-flop a flippy flop shoe <laughs> could just turn them into flip-flops hey we've got to make light of this situation i could always get some uh, tape and wrap the tape around it which interestingly enough the uh this when you word for yes is tape does that make them confusing if i ask for tape can i have tape why do you want that <laughs> ah tabby's found something What's this? Pritstick. I don't think that's what's. I don't think that's going to help. Um, 
I got insoles. <laughs> yes, we need glue. Let's go and ask someone. Try and find a shop worker to help me out perhaps. There's till workers. Hopefully there's someone working in the store that can answer my question. Okay. Ah, oh, okay, interesting. I've been looking for this. So I got this. No matter where I look, it's quite expensive. But you found someone. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's still looking, still looking, still on the hunt. For a, uh... Of course I am, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, we just keep searching the aisles, and hopefully we'll either find someone to help me to confirm they don't do super glue here, which would make sense because it's just like a normal store, really, isn't it? But I might be lucky. Does seem to sell quite a wide variety of different things. Oh, I've already been down there. We do have a store worker there, but she's a little bit older and I think the older generation don't speak English as well. And I don't uh, don't know enough of Lithuanian to... If we can't find any, I've just had a fork. What's I've got that? another hairball in my bag. <laughs> what, we're going to tie, <laughs> tie my shoe with a hairball? Just like ah, it. what's this? Is this... Yes. Super glue. <laughs> oh, yes. We've done it, guys. The hunt for super glue is complete. Do I need two? No, no I don't. Let's get one. one. Right. Super glue. Super glue. Well done, Sam. There you go. Didn't need to, uh, to bother anyone. I hate doing that in stores. I don't know about you guys, but like going into a store and like asking them, oh yeah, let's get a drink. 100%. 100%. Okay, cool. So yeah, um, with the Kaladim people. Oh, I got it that time. Kaladim. With the Kaladim people, um, they have a, a special dish called. I think it's called Kibane. Um, so I'm gonna try and try that as well if I can find it. We don't need a bottle. We need a little one, don't we? Yeah. Awesome. Keep ourselves hydrated. Ah, kvass flavour. Very nice. Gira, I had that on the on the tour. What have we got? various different things up there's Miranda I know what Sammy's choosing I think I'm gonna have a soft drink like a, uh, a non-fizzy drink myself I'm actually quite dehydrated all of the beer I was drinking on that food tour guys kombucha <laughs> now the new hunt begins I guess I could have some water but uh, I fancy something a bit flavorful So tomato juice. I've heard that's quite popular in Lithuania, guys. And uh, cherry syrup. Very nice. Um, we can have a kid's one, look. I might minion. go for... Oh, man, there's so many choices. No, this is what you want. This one here. You want minions. I want the minions. Good drink. Or trolls. <laughs> or, or trolls. Are they, are they my only choices? They are your only choices. Oh, dear. I'm a troll and I'm a kid. A kid troll. Right. Uh... Water it is, I think. I'm going for a Miranda. I'm going to get two waters. Let's have a water and a Miranda each. Can you hold on them for me? Thank you. <laughs> Just zooming the camera in on me so you can see my lovely face, guys. But uh, yeah, so Miranda, let's go for that as well. Lime flavoured Coke. So yeah, now we've got super glue. That's uh, hopefully going to solve my situation. I've got to let it set, obviously, so I can't set off for a while but we're here till about 5 p.m. it's about 1 p.m. currently so yeah hopefully uh, hopefully we have enough time to do everything and wait for my shoe to dry out <laughs> absolute nightmare literally li I stepped off the train and seconds later I heard a snapping sound and that was my shoe and I was like I can't believe this is happening to me my shoe is completely gone Okay, here we go. We go here. We go here. Yeah. All taken. Okay. 
I almost put my phone on there. <laughs> we'll get a little bag and then I'll carry Yeah, okay. Well, we don't really need a bag, do we? We're gonna drink, we're gonna drink them. We're gonna drink them pretty much straight away. Love a dinner. Cortella. Ah, chew. Garostianos. Okay, cool. So, uh, let's go this way. I think that's the way we need to go anyway. So, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to fix my shoe, have a drink. And then we'll head over to the castle and we'll show you the castle. We may even go inside it. And after we've done that, we're going to go and explore the Caladin culture and go and see more about the people. I believe there's a museum as well. Wow, Before we do that, look at that. Wow. That is amazing. Beautiful. Lithuania, you truly have a beautiful country. Absolutely stunning. How lucky are you guys? You get to wake up to this and see these beautiful sights. And a very, very beautiful language you have as well. It's a difficult language. There's lots of vras, 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 lots of r's rolled but we do try. But anyway, I'm gonna fix these shoes and we get to the castle. Let's do it. Right, I think this trip is gonna be cursed, guys. <laughs> the drink that we got was the wrong one. It's sparkling water. Now, thankfully, yeah. I like sparkling water. That's no problem at all for me. Yeah. Tammy hates it. Now, I've got a double dose in sparkling water and apparently there's not enough shoe glue to fix my shoe either. When's the pain gonna end, guys? Right, things are improving, guys. I actually found a water fountain. Look at this, look, on my shoe. Somewhat fixed, eh? Look at that, eh? Because your wife is a genius. Well, I don't know about that, love. I think uh, we, we're, just, we're just looking out. But yeah, fresh water in Lithuania. Look at that. What a great country. Right, let's make our way to that castle. All right, guys, not far from the castle. And my shoe's holding up. And uh, Tammy wants a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A fridge magnet. So, got to do that. <laughs> got to do that first. So let's have a look and see what we've got. See what she likes first. Labadina, um, Argoluetsis Kitite Cortella. Perfect. Achu. Okay, pick your, pick your thing. Pick your thing. They accept card, which is good. Uh, are you using to English, okay? Yeah. Oh, you speak English. Perfect. What's it like living in Trake? Is it nice? Um, for a young person, not really. It's more of like a tourist town. It really is. I didn't I didn't yeah. expect this. <laughs> I, I walked through and I was like, I thought we'd be the only like tourists here. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, this is all mainly for tourists, so there aren't really all things to do for years. Right, okay. Yeah, Would, so it, I mean it's pretty there's oh, a lot so of nature. Nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful mm, yeah. place. We're going to see the castle shortly. Is that nice? Yeah, it's is it good? Nice. My friends, because I, I live in a place in England where we've got a big Lithuanian community oh, oh. and they always say to me, go to Trake, go to Trake. And I was like, okay, I'll go to Trake. Yeah. And um, they and before I came here, I started learning about, I can't pronounce it, the Kar Karadim? Uh, Karadimi. Yeah. The people that live here. What Do you know anything about the people that live here? I don't really remember like, one of the Dutch, the Dutch, like, they brought uh, Karadimi in Trake. Okay. So, just to, I don't know, make it more popular for like foreigners, I think. Ah. Yeah, something like that. And they brought their culture with it and they like, keep it like, keep it stairs. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. It's basically everything. <laughs> and uh, is this, this thing here, is is this kib kibine? Kibine? Yeah. How do you say that? Kibine? Is yeah. that kibine? What is that? Is that like a pastry? Ah, we had something uh, earlier in because we just came from Vilnius. Oh. Uh, it was called Seburikas, 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 but it was uh, undercooked. They didn't cook it properly. Oh. Almost got poisoning. <laughs> it's a bit different. That one. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This one is three. Yep, Perfect. Sounds fine. good. Oh, thank you. Your English is amazing, by the way. How did you learn to speak so well? No, I think it's just from movies, basically. Really? Yeah. All of my friends from um, college, they uh, when I used to go to college, they 
could speak English perfectly, but they had a, like an American, like a slightly American accent. Oh. And they're like, yeah, we move, learn for the movies. And I was like, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, it's just from the movies. Ah. But chaburaki is uh, like very different from Tibene. Yes, it was deep fried, I think. Yeah, they fried it. Fried, but this yeah. is baked uh, instead. Baked, yeah. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you. Peace out, girl. See you later. Awesome. Oh, what a lovely person. Sparing us the time. And uh, again, in Lithuania, the English is so good here. Like, the, uh, the people uh, that I've come across, every single person, can speak English really well. And uh, Shaburikad, what did she say? Sorry, how is that pronounced? <laughs> I just forgot our <laughs> pronunciation. Shaburikas, I think it was. My hair's getting everywhere. Shabur, whatever it's pronounced, right? So we went to the store earlier near the train station in Vilnius, and uh, well, my hair's getting everywhere. Look at this. And uh, went to the, um, this like little kebab shop just to fill up, you know, get a snack. And <laughs> I have to do that for a second. And uh, we brought we brought those and as I just said to the lady there it was uh, undercooked so I opened it up and uh, two, were undercooked. two of them were undercooked yeah and it was literally like mush inside and I couldn't believe it I was like bro it's the most basic of things the food hygiene <laughs> but uh, it was really strange he was from Bangladesh and he had lived here for two years and I spoke more Lithuanian than he did which is incredible because I'm only here for like four days, five days in Lithuania and I've learnt more in five days than he has in two years so because uh, I speak to him in Lithuania he looked confused and I was like English? English gay? yeah 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 English gay yeah oh wow okay all right guys here <laughs> my first look at the castle let's have a look at this get a load of that people amazing so I'm going to quickly sort my air out because it's uh, <laughs> rather windy and then uh, we'll go and have a look at this castle. Alright, hair sorted. We found the way to get to the castle. So it's just over there. Being offered various boat rides which is pretty cool but not looking to do that today. And here's the castle. But it's spotted something really cool. There's these cool little uh, like wooden house things here that we're going to buy. Um, so let's have a look. Um, uh, super, super. Um, which one do you want? The one that says Vilnius or the one behind it? I quite like this one here actually. This one. Venus. Yeah. Thank Wow, very, very beautiful. Look at all these. Ah, so Lithuania is Lietuva. Lietuva, okay. That's how you say it. This is cool though. I love these little wooden houses. We're trying to get trinkets from the uh, from the journey, so. Super. Achu. Achu, grostianos. All right, awesome. So, let's go and explore the castle. We've got a little wooden house. I might stick that in my office because uh, I've got a little office at home, and I'm trying to collect little trinkets for it for, from the journeys. Either that, or Tom's going to try and find somewhere for it in the living room. Yeah. But we're going to try and collect a trinket from every place we visit. I think, I think it would be better. Look at these. How cool is that? So, let me explain why we're at the castle before we're actually visiting the uh, the Kalarim Street because there's a whole street. And that is because in the 14th century, the Grand Duke of Lithuania actually brought the Karadin people here to Lithuania, to Turakai, Turakai, sorry, Turakai, very hard to, uh, <laughs> hard to pronounce that correctly. Brought them here to Turakai to, uh, to protect and defend this castle here. And that's how they came to this region. And uh, the goal really is to learn more about the people themselves. I've learned little snippets of their history, but really the best way to learn is from the uh, people themselves uh, or someone who has dedicated knowledge of this kind of thing so here we go walking through the bridge through this lovely uh, lake and it would have been guarded by this big fort and you would have had quite a few of the warriors 
uh, protecting the castle. They would have been stationed up there with their ar uh, arrows. They were very, very skilled archers and uh, very, very skilled swordsmen. That's why they were brought over to Lithuania by the, uh, the Grand Duke of Lithuania in the 14th century. It's because they had such, uh, such battle-hardened skills and they were true warriors. And that was the reason why they were brought here. But there is an important thing to know. And that is, well, I thought I just lost Tammy there, but that is that the actual community, the Karadim community, is uh, ethnically kind of disappearing a little bit. Um, so essentially, the Karadim language is slowly dying off. The Karadim culture and the Karadim way of life is slowly being lost over the years. And uh, I think it's you know a lot of what they're trying to do here is they're trying to keep that culture alive and uh, obviously tourism helps here and the uh, the, the tourist element but uh, most importantly it's the uh, knowing the history and uh, remembering the people that came here and fought so hard to defend Trake and uh, make it into such a beautiful place that it is now so uh, yeah I think the castle plays a big role in understanding the history of the people here and that's why we're visiting the castle. It is quite a touristy place, Trakea as you've already heard, but um, I, uh, I would still like to, uh, I'd like to break beyond that and explore a little bit more about the people and understand a bit more about what they uh, represent here. So here's the castle and looking pretty cool and uh, yeah pretty incredible really. I mean, look at that bridge. That's uh, that's awesome. But so many tourists, so many, and uh, yeah, wow! Look at that. Labadiana, Labadiana, Labadiana. <laughs> cool guys. I like the Lithuanian people. So yeah, here we go. This is the uh, the castle itself that we're coming towards now. And uh, wow, pretty, pretty incredible. Really must uh, be said. I mean, look at this. You don't see this everywhere. So, as I say, my friends told me about this place. I didn't mention how touristy it was actually, so I'm a little bit surprised, but I can understand why it is. Um, and we are tourists ourselves really but we try to do yeah. things a little bit differently from your traditional tourists we try to do things a little bit more uh, kind of on our own we see loads of tour guides and stuff and obviously they've got to make their bread so uh, yeah fair play to them but we're not really interested in that kind of stuff we want to try and do it on our own and try and learn stuff on our own we might not learn as much as we would had we uh, gone in and done it with a tour guide but uh, I don't know, it feels a bit more authentic when you try and get in and talk with the people around the town the people that aren't being paid to tell you and again if you're a tour guide it's no disrespect mate or lady or whoever you are you know it's more about uh, just the preference that we have for travel so uh, yeah it's a good old walk but as you can see here you've got the little doorways so I'm imagining what would have happened here is that the archers the Karadi archers along with the archers of uh, um, Trake would have been stationed here and if there was any threats they would have started firing down a barrage of arrows which uh, is pretty cool <laughs> so oh blimey let's see what the entrance fee is <laughs> just tripped over <laughs> and I gotta be careful because I have a broken shoe so I can't afford to trip over quite literally otherwise I've got to buy more super glue and then my shoe will become more super glue than shoe not often you get to say that. Here we go. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's get a load of this then. All right, so there's a bit of a queue, so I'm back around waiting that. But you can see so far, this is what we've got. So pretty snazzy. Nice one. There you go. What do you reckon so far, Sam? So I guess this would have been the court courtyard where they trained. But yeah, I'm gonna go and buy a ticket, get ourselves in here, and go and get a closer look. All right guys, so unfortunately, 
we couldn't get into the castle because the line was just going so slowly and we have a limited amount of time here and the, the real reason why we're here is to look at the Caladine people so we had to give that a miss so we do apologize I'm sure you want to see inside the castle but there are plenty of YouTube videos out there from the castle and we will try and get back here one day to go and look at it but it was just cram packed of people and the line was out here and our friend said lady in the till but she was really taking her time and we've only got like 45 minutes left here so I want to make the most of it but we're here and this is actually the Karadim Museum and there's a little bit of history here so the Karadaitis, Karadaitis, Karadaitis let's go with that for now Karadaitis Karadaitis is a nation of speaking Tur a nation speaking Turkic settled in Trakay at the end of the 14th century so that would have been when they were brought through the official date of the Karadaitis migration to Trakay is 1397 to 1398 the name of the nation is derived from the Karadaitis faith the faith is based on the Old Testament has Islamic elements Ganesa in the Karadaitis language is a temple a building of Karadaitis silk court which has remained in Trakay so Trakay sorry I do apologize so let's get inside here and let's see if we can learn more about the Karadaitis culture and uh, understand more about its people because that's what we're most interested about in this uh, video and learning more and there we go so this is Kararimu Gatava Gatava um, Kararimu Street Kararim Street Ah, here. Okay, okay. Ah, okay. So we meet. Uh, okay. Oh, talk for free. Ritoy. Ritoy. Ati prasha vas nikalo buli ati vishkai. Ritoy nyamokami. Tomorrow is free. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Um, you're no problem. We 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 can pay. That's that's okay. Um, Angolo. Um, we can pay today. We're happy to pay. Do, do. Cortella. Cortella, you Okay. Okay. Yeah. Karadim Museum. Karadim. Karadim. English. English. Do you think she should be smart as to go to the stores? Karadim is from Karadim. <laughs> okay, so in 2016 there was only a wedding ceremony. Okay, okay, in, 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 in Ukraine. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay, okay. At you, at you. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this is the Karadim Museum, and uh, we uh, there are some uh, places in the uh, some high, yeah things in English. So. When the tenth and eight, when in the tenth and eighth, eighth and tenth centuries, there you go, I've got there in the end. The Turkic tribes of the Kazarian Karaganate adopted the Karadim faith. Karadim, based solely on the Old Testament text, rejecting any written or all com uh, commentaries to it, they began to be called Karadims. Since the eleventh century, these tribes spread in the mountainous parts of Crimea. So this is where they would have come from, Crimea. 
Wow. So let's have a look. So we've got the books here and okay, interesting. I don't understand some of this guys, so you may be able to, may have to help me, but that is pretty amazing. Look how old some of these things are here. So some pretty old pictures as well. Amazing. So uh, it would have been, it would have been free had we come tomorrow, but we're not here tomorrow. So I had to pay 18, but hey, it's going towards a good cause. It's going towards the, uh, the upkeep of a lovely museum. So here we go. So there's some of the Kadarin people. You can see that if I just flip this over, you can see they have quite a unique style of dress there with the hats and the clothing. And as you can see, some more examples here and here. And we've got two more here as well. Wow. Now, unfortunately, there is uh, some information in English, but not loads, but we can see an example of a Karadim style building here and then the people of the community. Now, it's really sad to think that these people of this community, the language and the culture and the things that make them who they are, are slowly being, you know, slowly disappearing. But, you know, as I say, efforts like this are being made to maintain that. So as we can see, look how old some of this history is. Absolutely incredible. You can miss that. So I think this is from a wedding, she was saying, uh, in Ukraine. Um, or some of the information here is from a wedding in Ukraine. That might be a mistranslation though, perhaps. But yeah, look at that. Wow, very, very cool. So, ah, here we go. So there's uh, some arrowheads from Crimea, some uh, playing dice, spindles, band rings. Wow, a postcard, a map of the settlements. So this is where they would have been settled. Um, postcards and book of Saint, from St. Petersburg. Young Karim woman at a fountain. Wow, well, I can understand this with a bit more context now. But as you can see here, the dress is very, very unique. And I guess it's from St. Petersburg, which is pretty cool. And these are old instruments. What are they again? These were spearheads. spearheads. Wow. Incredible. Look at those guys. Nice spearheads and then some rings. And then plenty of history. Incredible. Wow. Very, very nice. Look at this. Wow. Okay. So look at this. This is examples of, look at that beautiful horn. Let me zoom out a little bit there for you guys. A beautiful horn there and some of the ornamental plates and indeed the um, pot there. So they had a very, very unique style, the Canadian people. Very, very unique indeed. Sorry there, just uh, in your face right there. But I don't know who this gentleman is. Maybe this can explain to me. A group of Canadian students from St. Petersburg University came up with the idea to start collecting exhibits of a cultural heritage from the future Canadian Museum. So this was done by a group of students. At the time, the group of Canadian academic youth was headed by a second year student. Saraya Shapshal, after 20 years, 1916 to 1929 in Crimea. Wow, very, very cool. Awesome. And then you've got some uh, some swords and stuff. Can I just interrupt? Yeah, what's up, love? The lady has just given us this for free. Oh, wow, how cool is that? Oh, yeah. that's so nice and of her. Just a, obviously, thank you to her. Oh, awesome. Oh, what a lovely lady. And uh, obviously, so this is the thing, guys, let me just quickly flip the camera around. So. Despite there being a language barrier here, people are really, really friendly and still very, very helpful in Lithuania. But that's well, so lovely. It's just another example of Lithuanian um, kindness and, and co yeah, just how friendly the people are. So do come here, even if there's a language barrier, you know, as you've seen, Google Translate does the job. But I know limited Lithuanian fortune. But here we go. You can see some examples of Karadim dress. Wow. And very, very unique. It's hard to explain. I've never really seen anything like this before. I guess the closest I could kind of explain is that I've been to an Iranian restaurant in the UK and the decor is quite similar to this, but I guess it's also quite like Crimean, like Tatar, I guess you could say um, as well. Um, I don't know much about the region, so hopefully someone can help me. And I do apologize for getting things wrong, but I'm here to learn as much as you guys. So uh, hopefully we can learn together. And what's this here? 
Okay. Not entirely sure. I can't read some of this. Number five, that looks interesting. If, uh, Tam, if you could, if you could do a translation. Yeah, so we could use Google Translate to, uh, we could use Lens. Google Lens might do yeah, the job. Do. You can use, Google Lens is quite useful for this. We'll show you it in action shortly. So we're going to use a Google Lens. So if you guys ever want to like read stuff, you can use Google Lens or anything else as well. We're not here to advertise stuff. So hit translate just there and hover over it and it should give us the English. Okay, so number five is table with a metal top, tray Syria, 20th century. Look at that, oh, just here. So what is number five, sorry? Number five is copy according to the 19th century help the original oh great it's a cradle okay that's a cradle okay guys so that's a cradle and this is the 20th century from syria fascinating so the national clothing of paladin women consists of velvet unbuttoned unbuttoned jacket with wide sleeves up to the elbows Kircha. i do apologize guys and a flat round velvet hat decorated with a necklace on or coins wow so it's so good that they're keeping this alive. You know, they're keeping the spirit of the Catalan people alive. And that's very important. So this must be the crest of the Catalan people. And here's some more artifacts as well. And here is the crib. Okay. So it would have been decorated. And there's some information here. Okay, okay. So we've got a drinking horn, which we just saw a minute ago. Engraved with Sedaya Shep Shep Shal's name from Vilnius. Okay, the vessel for heating wine from Poland. So much history here, guys. And let's see what we've got here. The temples of the Lithuanian Karadims. Look at that, what a building. Incredible. In terms of the language and ethnog uh, ethnogenesis, the Karadims living in Lithuania and other European countries are a Turkic nation professing Karadism. The concept stems from the word Kara, which in Arab and Hebrew means to read or to spread and study the Holy Writ, to be apostle, follow, follower, and the word Quran, or Quran of the same origin, as well as the word Kari, which means the one reading the Quran. The word Kararim is used to express both ethnic, linguistic, national, as well as religious identity. What an interesting group of people. Wow. And look at this here. What is this? Let's see if we can find out. You could, I think there's some information here though. Uh, lots of information, <laughs> lots of information. Um, find out for me, Tam, yeah. She's just translating the layers. So it's a dough. A what, sorry? Oh, a dough kneader. So that machine. Wow. In Turkey in the 19th century. Incredible. And here's some examples of these uh, things that they would have been baking. Just here, these traditional breads that looks very similar to challah bread, actually. Obviously, probably completely different, but looks similar. And this is the uh, gibinai. And then this is another traditional bread. And then the spoons and stuff. Yes, love? Exactly the same. Same thing, but just a smaller version. Right, okay. Okay, and this looks like, well, I guess it looks like a kind of horse's saddle, actually. Saddle, Central Asia. There you go. A Central Asian uh, saddle. Yeah. Fascinating. Such interesting history, guys. Amazing. So we're going to have a bit more of a wander around the museum to learn some more, and we're going to absorb it now. Um, but do come and visit. Come and support the Kadadim people, and then we'll look around the Kadadim street and see what a traditional Kadadim building looks like, and perhaps try Kibunai as well. Okay, so back on the windy streets of Trake. Very, very windy today. I hope it's not ruining the uh, sounds too much. But as you can see here, I believe we found a restaurant that sells Kibunai or Kibunai. So uh, we shall partake and see what it's like, because this is a traditional Kadadim uh, dish. So we've got beef and we've got chicken or lamb. Oh, oh it's going to be a tough one. Oh. Shall I get two? One each? Two. Yeah. Okay, we'll go for lamb and we will go for maybe chicken or beef. Beef. Beef and lamb. Beef Sounds and good. Lamb. Sounds good. Beef and lamb. 
And oh, they've got drinks as well. Do we need a drink? No, I've still got my We're Miranda. good. You've still got your Miranda. And oh, we've got the water from earlier. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you drank that? I drank Okay. That. Okay, let's. Uh, is, is it through here? Yeah, yeah. Is it through here? Oh, that's the toilet, okay. Wow, look at this, this is very traditional. Huh? We're going to take away. Yeah, we're going to take away. We haven't got the toilet. Take it, are you scared Yes. Perfect. Um, can we get uh, two, are they called kibane or kibanai? Yes, you want to take away. Take, yeah. take away, two. Um, but you need to wait about 15 minutes. 15 okay. minutes. We've got 15 minutes. 25, that's fine, yeah, no problem. Okay. Can we get um, a one lamb and one beef, please? Okay. Achoo. I'm sorry for my terrible Lithuanian pronunciation. It's a very difficult language. <laughs> one lamb and one beef, yes? One lamb. Achoo. Uh, cortella. Cortella. Is that right? It's how you say Cortella? Cortella. Cortella. Okay. I was wondering why everyone looks so confused. <laughs> At you. Uh, oh no, I'm okay, thank you. We're going to go and explore. We'll be back in, what, 15 minutes? Perfect. Thank you so much. See you shortly. Okay, awesome. So we've got the Kibunai to order. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying them. Eight, uh, was it eight euro, uh, seven euros, 90 cents. So that's pretty good, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad deal. We'll find out, but that actually works out well that we've got uh, 15 minutes to wait because actually uh, there's a few places around here, a few Kaladim houses that I wanted to show you because the architecture is completely different to what it's like anywhere else. So let's have a look and you shall see. So look at these houses. These are traditional Karadim houses. I think my pronunciation's getting slowly better. I'm getting used to rolling that R, guys. But here we go. This is a traditional Karadim house. So this is Karadimu Street, or Gata Gatava. I still don't, don't, know how, don't know how to pronounce that word, but I know it's street. And these are traditional houses, guys. Look at these. Incredible. A very, very unique building style indeed. So, this is Kaladim Street and as you can see the ethnic, the cultural and historical identity is still here but it's something they're working very hard to maintain because it is slowly but surely dying out unfortunately. Um, as I say it's a very very old uh, culture but it's one that uh, has slowly become ingrained into the Lithuanian way of life and of course as a result a lot of the identity is being lost and a good example of that actually is within the Lithuanian community where I live in England. So the Lithuanians in England, some of them actually can't speak Lithuanian all that well, which is strange. Um, they forget over time, they said to me, they're like, you know, I don't speak it in so long that I forget how to speak it. So potentially that's the same thing with the Karadim people as well, is that over time they've kind of, you know, the cultural identity has been kind of shrunken down so much and they've absorbed the culture of Lithuania more that they themselves have become ethnically more um, Lithuanian and you see that a lot in the UK so the Lithuanian people in the UK that I know uh, they're influenced quite a lot by the British TV shows or the American TV shows as I mentioned earlier and so that's kind of a similar thing so uh, we uh, obviously need to try and preserve culture where we can and I'm quite you know a lot of English people wouldn't be very keen on kind of bringing different cultures into England but me I think it's important to, uh, to preserve cultural identity where you can and if you can have little snippets here and there to preserve that so you know where you've come from that's great you know so things like this are really important for that and to understand it so the 18 euros I paid to get in there was yeah well worth it um, and actually I'm kind of glad that we didn't go to the uh, you know the castle because that would have been putting money into a different place and I think I'd rather put the money to help preserve such an amazing museum so yeah what we're gonna do is go and grab this kibune and then we will head back to the train station because we've got like 25 minutes got to start heading back in 25 minutes uh, because the trains into um, Trake are not that regular um, to and from so we have to head back to Vilnius now uh, but we've got about 25 more minutes here in Trake we're gonna head back there to the train station we've got a first class train so we'll show you what that's like because uh, that's quite interesting we only paid like I think it was six euros for that for both of us 
so we'll give you a first class train experience if you're interested in that and we'll give you our first impressions of Kibane as well um, but as you've seen the Lithuanian people are incredible so if you're uh, if you have reservations about visiting because you're worried that there might be a language barrier or you don't know much about Lithuanian culture then hopefully this has uh, shown you that actually the Lithuanian people are really really incredible and really friendly so I'm gonna wait for that Kibane to be ready and then we're gonna tuck into that and see what that's like I'm really looking forward to the landmark actually so see you shortly Okay, so we have the Kibinai and here's some more Kararim houses just here. And I do apologise for my pronunciation, guys. Very hard to get the R. What's that? Oh, a coffee machine. Look at that. All of these traditional buildings and then suddenly this very modern coffee machine. But we're going to try these Kibinai and uh, we we'll found a nice little place down here. Not far from uh, the lake. I don't know if there's actually any benches over there. I'm hoping there are. But... Uh, Look at all these cool fountains, yeah that's a, a pretty cool one just here, look I wonder what that's for, if that's ornamental or if it still works. Oh right, does it have the pump anywhere? Uh, it would have been up here. Oh, okay, probably would have been there wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Well, I can't see any seats over there so I guess we'll enjoy our Kibane here. Kibane, Kibane, whoa! Blimey! <laughs> that is a... Uh, that's freshly... Uh, Fresh, from freshly turned that uh, that has right so if i who wants to do the honors first me or you i'll film you first. okay let's start with me and uh i shall try i don't know which one's which so hopefully they're both good but uh yeah kibanei so the uh the kibanei is uh a traditional um kararim uh, dish actually so that's what makes this quite important to try as well and it kind of reminds me somewhat of a Cornish pasty back home, and even mm. the crimp. But let's try it. Let's see what the similarities are. If they end there, basically. Get a close up on that. Oh. Oh wow. Is it good? Mmm. It's very similar to a Cornish pasty. It smells like a Cornish pasty. It smells like a Cornish pasty. Tammy's first try of Kibine, Kibine. I don't know, I still don't to pronounce that guys. I'm working on it. Mm. It's like a very, it's a softer dough than the Cornish pasty. Mm. I don't know which one do you reckon that is. Do you reckon that's the beef or the lamb? That might be the beef. Yeah? Mm. Give this one a go, this must be the lamb then. You that? I'll take that back off your hands. Open, it up, open this bad boy up, see what we're doing. See what we're dealing with here. Look at that. So you've got, looks like onions and cabbage perhaps. And then a very, very hearty amount of meat there. Oh wow. Lamb? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. I right, so. let's do a little swap. <laughs> where I give you this and the wind is not allowing me to put this back in this bag okay great is that what is that the lamb one yeah mm -hmm. okie dokie so lamb tried for the first time I hope this is the lamb it smells very very good mm. that's brilliant you've got some competition Cornwall I'll tell you that for free that's amazing, look inside there. The juices of the meat, all been soaked up in there. And then I've, you've got like different, like it looks like pepper in there. Mm. I believe this is like onion, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Onion. And uh, just like a very, like, very, very good quality meat. And the pastry is really nice and soft, but it's got this nice little crunch as well. So mm. the Karanims, they know how to bake well as well. Incredible. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna get on this train, first class train in Lithuania for what was it? Two About two euros, euros fifty each. Incredible. We'll see what that's like for two euros fifty. It's only twenty minutes down the road to Vilnius. We'll see what that's like, and we'll give you our thoughts of Turakai and indeed the Karadin people. All right, so here we find ourselves on a uh, first-class train, and here we are. We're in fourteen and fifteen. And this is what you can expect from a first-class train. And oh, it's a double decker. Oh. So we've got what, what 15 minutes yeah. to uh, 
to be here to wait and uh, yeah track I was uh, track A track A track A was amazing so what did we think of track A well it was a beautiful beautiful place I mean look at that absolutely incredible what a view you don't get that from the train very often do you and just so much history weren't there yeah like can't believe how much history this place has it was very very touristy obviously like there's so many tourists here but we just tried to stay away and uh, you know kind of let them stay in their groups and we tried to you know have a look around ourselves didn't we but yeah in terms of the history of the Caroline people we've got this rather awesome book as well to uh, enjoy when we get back to the apartment and then we're gonna go and explore some more of Vilnius tomorrow outside of the tourist areas actually so if you're interested in, in that kind of stuff then do join us for that vlog but uh, anyway we really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video from us too we hope you have a great day and we shall see you very very soon take care